Daniel chapter 9. We're going to look at tonight, and Lord willing, tomorrow night, Daniel's prayer. We're going to get out of the room of uh, prophecy. We're going to look at a prayer. Then we'll get back to prophecy. And mostly everybody wants a revival. I don't believe there's going to be a revival. We're praying for a revival in America. You ain't going to get it. Because first of all, you got to have a revival in the churches. And that's not going to happen because we're in the lad to see in church age. And you need to go read Revelation chapter 3. Onto the church of, uh, uh, of the Laodicea, right? But I know what I know what your revivals are in many churches. Talk about Baptist churches. The preachers go to their preachers come. Hey, we had forty-five in our church. We had a hundred in our church. We had seven hundred. Though we have three hundred people in our in our city at our Sunday school. We had these people show. We had the most chicken. We had the longest line at the buffet. Was at a church, a person come up. Well, you know, you baptized me last month and, and last year, Pastor. Remember that? Put them under the water. That's another person under the water. That's the revival today. And I'm going to show you tonight by Daniel's prayer why you're not going to get a revival. At least one of America. I'll tell you what's going to happen with the revival. Individuals will have revival. When they get saved. And get into a King James Bible. When somebody who is saved. Gets in the Bible. And repents. And gets right with God. And forsakes the sins and foolishness. And the paganism. An individual who will take his wife, lead her the right way. That that'd be a revival. And his children. You say it can't be done. I do it. I have come to the conclusion there are things in the church that are paganism, and I've had pastors say, Well, we're gonna do what we want to do. Then pray for a revival. You ain't gonna get it. When the family gets together, prays together, studies the Bible together, that's a revival. When the children do right, come on, Mr. Pastor. Don't even, don't even think about a Mrs. Pastor. Come on, Mr. Pastor. What are your children doing? What are they doing their Christian walk? What are they doing for Jesus? And you're going to get up there while your children live in worldly, not in church, you go, oh, let's pray for revival. You don't even have a revival in your family. How you expect the How you expect the United States revival when you when you got people who are sinning in your church? You got people in your church that are unsaved, think they're doing God a good purpose, and you're not preaching to them. You're not giving them the truth, and you're holding another Bible. What do you think? I ain't no gonna be no revival. I'm gonna show you what revival is tonight. Daniel 9.1 In the first year, Darius, the son of Azahurus, I don't know how to pronounce these names, and neither do you, of the seed of the Medes. All right, so we are now out of Belshazzar. And I said we are out of order. And in chapter 8, we were still under Belshazzar. And... Chapter 5, Belshazzar, he's dead. Dyrus takes over. Now Daniel's been having these dreams. This is outside the dream. In the first year of his reign, Dyrus, I, Daniel, understood the books, the numbers of the years, okay, whereof the word of the Lord First of all, in the revival, you better have the word of the Lord. I got an ESV. I got a TPQ. I got an RSV. I got a dummies idiot version. That ain't the word of God. 
If you got any Bible that comes out of Alexander, that comes out of Westcott and Hort, who don't believe God, don't believe in prosperity, don't believe in anything. You got a Bible of Westcott and Hort and the Alexandrian Creed and the Synodicus and the, and the Vaticanus, Vaticanus, that anus Bible. I said anus. You don't want me to say ass. You're not have the word of Lord. You're not going to get a revival. You know why there's no revivals in America anymore? The perverted Bibles. First of all, you got to have the word of the Lord. I have, you go to my PowerPoint, point, you go to my, my family website, you'll, get, you'll see PowerPoint where you have the word of God has been subtracted from your Bibles. Go to Hades. Well, you said that wrong. So it's go to hell. Now, in your Bible, it doesn't say that. Came to Jeremiah the prophet. That he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So Daniel has picked up not the original, because one of the originals of Jeremiah's prophecy was burnt up. Another original of Jeremiah, I believe it's Jeremiah or Ezekiel, was thrown into the Euphrates River, tied to a rock. So another thing, Daniel did not get the originals. The originals will not build you a revival. And Daniel understood the word of the Lord. And Daniel did not go to seminary. Where a man goes to the seminary, seminary, I say that correct. And you're not going to like this message. So. He goes to the seminary carrying a King James Bible. And he comes out as a rejecter of the King James Bible. I know. I'm a doctor of theology. I've been trained in this stuff. I went to a King James uh, Institute and came out of King James Institute and still believe the King James book. I, I, I know many men who go into the seminary and they come out. Well, you can have any Bible. You, you, know, you, you know, you're really foolish to say King James only. I don't say King James only. Well, yes, you do. I say only King James. I say King James only, only King James. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be in heaven up there handing you people with no King James. I'll be handing you a King James Bible and say, this is the truth. This is the truth. You, I know. You're too scholarly. And I set my faith. Now, we're going to look at the words here now. I'm going to set my face to the Lord God. To seek by prayer. A lot of Christians don't even know what prayer is. And if you go to the, the magazine, you get in the mail and all these Christian books, <laughs> Christian. You know, even in those the, the bookstore we have right around the corner from our house, you go to the Christian fiction. What? <laughs> you don't you mean the Christian liars? Johnny forty four. Prayer. Even myself, I lack a prayer life that's proper to God. I don't pray like I should. I don't even know how to pray. Sometimes my prayers is it's just naming stuff. Paul would say, I pray for you all the time. And supplications. I mean, you're, you're reaching, you're crying out. It, you, it, it, it's, a, it's a prayer of earnest. We're talking about life or death. We're not talking about so we can have a beautiful, no rainy day for our fellowship outside. With fasting. It means you give up. That means, means you put your body to suffer. This are the, the ways of revival. It's been a long time since I've been in a church to, with fasting. And we're going to end our fast Friday. We're going to go out to a restaurant. We ain't fasting Friday. We're going to go four days fasting, three days fasting. Then we're going to, at the, at the afternoon or at the dinner time, we're, we're going to have a felt. That's not fasting that day. Sackcloth. 
sackcloth. That, that, that's a that's an old potato kind of sacky thing. Is you wear it. I mean, you're, you're putting your clothes away. You're putting on clothes that just don't feel good. Makes you itch. And ashes. You know what I am? Just ashes. You know what everything will be if God destroyed everything in my life? It'd be just a pile of ashes. You know what it would be when, when, when I'm a carnal, worldly Christian and I do something not for Jesus? It will be ashes. How's that for start off for a revival? I prayed unto the Lord my God. And made my confession. Thou shalt confess. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us, the Bible says. First John 1 9. In order to confess, you got to first of all announce, hey, I'm guilty. That's lacking in your modern churches today. I'm a Christian, but I can still keep doing what I do and keep sinning as I'm sinning in God. That's not confession. Confession's you not going to another man, but you getting down before your God, your Creator, your Savior. I have sinned against you, and these are the sins, and there are sins I don't even know. And Lord, there are sins I do, I do, and I do, and I do, and I do, and I enjoy it, and I don't enjoy it. Have you seen this in churches? Have you seen this in the family, in the homes? And said, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh, I'm in agony. A great and dreadful God. Now, do you see the Lord's Prayer? Thy Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You see, you know what Daniel's done with prayer? He started off, see, we don't say our Father. We don't say that as a prayer. We don't say that in prayer chain. We don't say, uh, you know, Hail Mary and all that. But we, when, when, when Jesus told the disciples, not us, when they asked the Lord, teach us how to pray. Very first thing is you put God first. You acknowledge who God is. You put God in his place. That's going to start a revival. Because when you start your prayer, God, you're in heaven. God, you are great. God, you are wonderful. God, And you put yourself down. There are people who go to church. Well, God, you must enjoy that I am here today. <laughs> There have been presidents of our of our country You're probably getting that oh boy oh this is great this nation's gonna be so great because I am here. Well, you ain't putting God on the throne. He's a great and dreadful God, and, and dreadful means the very fact is, if you do not align your life with the life that He has prescribed through His Word, you got the proper Word, your life is miserable. Keeping the covenant. Now, Daniel is a Jew dealing with the Jewish God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is in Babylon right now. Jerusalem's been destroyed. The temple's been destroyed because the sins of the people. And he's repleting to God. God, you know what you said to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is not you that we are in Babylon. It is us. And we're not going to be in Babylon much longer, verse 2, because you said 70 years. He's relying on the word of Jeremiah, we ain't here forever, because you keep your covenant. There are Christians here that will go up in the rapture, they will be at the judgment seat of Christ, they will have suffered all loss. Because they don't know what the Word of God says. Well, our church did Easter. We thought it was good. We had a happy birthday for Jesus because we thought it was good. Yeah, but that, that loudmouth bearded idiot 
told you was Esther, told you was Tammuz. He tried to get you into the right Bible, but you wouldn't listen. I will compare Bible with Bibles. It's written. It's spoken for you. I will give you the history. I will give you the dates. I will give you the truth about the pagans. Like Daniel got the truth of Jeremiah. I will give you the Bible verse. I will tell you the book, the chapter, and the verse. And if you reject that, you're not going to get that revival. And mercy to them that love him. Our God's a merciful God. And we got time. We'll look at another place. But uh, we've gone four verses. And, and to them that keep his commandments. Now that's Jewish. But Christians have commandments too. How are you with your enemy? You know, I gave you one of those Bible versions and everything about love thy neighbor and, you know, uh, help your neighbor. And, you know, that was removed out of their Bible. You can't remove something like that. A commandment is for Christians to love other Christians. You're not to hate other Christians. Now, there are some Christians, you know, they, they just rub me the wrong way. I don't hate them. It's just they, their character. But I pray for them. They just, we just don't, just, we don't get along. I don't hate you. That's a commandment for, for Christians. We want a revival. How's your hatred towards any? Do you hate anybody in the church? Do you hate? What if President Biden and his wife Jill got saved today or tomorrow, Lord willing? Would you still hate him? He's a Democrat. He's raised the gas price. And he, but what if he got saved? Would you hate him? Commandments of love. I'm not saying he, he saved. Uh, uh, he's a Roman Catholic. And, and his ways are not the Christian ways. Got to admit that. You know, Paul gave us everything in the Ten Commandments except for the Sabbath. How you doing? Well, you know, that's under the law. That's in the Pauline epistles. How you doing the Ten Commandments? You committed adultery against your wife? Well, no, no, no. I've never been with another woman. But Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, any man that looks upon a woman to lust after his heart. How you doing your adultery, buddy? How's it on the television set? How's it in the magazine? How's it on your computer screen? How's it at the beach? No Christian has any right to be at a beach and looking at those half-naked, fully-naked women and say, well, I'm not involved in adultery. How are you doing with the commandments? There are certain places Christians do not belong. Yes, I'm preaching. This is more than teaching. Daniel 9, 5. We have sinned. There are churches out there. But we don't sin. You know, you know what I do? When I'm off alone at night and when I was when my, before my wife died, I even do that. In the middle of the night, I, I, if I couldn't sleep, I say, Lord God, you, you know, I confess my sin. I say, Lord, what right now between you and me, what sin right now has affected my, my fellowship with you? And God will speak to me. God will tell me my sins. I've sinned. I am, listen, I am washed. I am a child of God, but I still sin. And if, if we want a revival, we've got to admit to God individually, we have sinned. The church has sinned. Look at the Laodicean church age, Romans chapter, I mean, Revelation chapter 3. Satan is inside. Jesus is outside. Satan is amen in the preacher. We got a great church. We got a great pastor. Not in the Laodicean church age, my friend. No. You do not. 
And there are some people I know they put the pastor and they put the church above God and Jesus. That's a sin. I know some Christians, the pastor left or the pastor died. They stopped going to church. Or they followed that pastor to another, where the church where he went. We, we, no, we have sinned. The Jews have sinned. The church has sinned against God. And when you sin against God, you're not going to get a blessing by God. God bless the America, not with the sin she's filed in. He ain't going to bless America by killing babies legally. He ain't going to bless America when you allow these children to say, I don't know if I'm a male or female. That's the biggest nonsense coming up right now. I don't know what sex I am. Take off your clothes, get in a bedroom, stand in front of a full-length mirror, look in that mirror. If you got a penis, you're a man. If you got a vagina, you are a woman. Nothing else. And if you think you're something else, you need to be locked up. You need to shut up and get locked up. Because all you're doing is defying God and the churches will be next to say, well, all are welcome. Come on in. That church won't accept you. Hey, listen, they're already marrying sodomites. That's an abomination. All are welcome. Church signs today. Yeah, Satan's in there. And Jesus said, goodbye. Close the door. Read Revelation chapter 3. We have committed iniquity. Iniquity is we have done unrighteous, unholy. We are not right with God. There is none righteous. No, not one. And the lad to see in church age, look how great we are. Look how rich we are. We have no need of nothing. You have a need to get on your knees, repent before a holy God, and get right by a holy God. And get the right Bible. The iniquity is you are not right before God. Sinning is you're not doing what God wants you to do. And we have done wickedly. We are vile. We are, we are everything opposite of God. Oh, we're so great. We're so wonderful. You're not going to get revival. It won't happen. God can't bless pride and proud. That's a sin. God is never proud. God is never pride. What God says, well done. This is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. Not proud. You got preachers and pastors who get up in the pulpit and say, I'm proud of my children. I'm proud of my church. I, that's a sin. It says in the book of Job about Satan, he is the king over all the children of pride. You got to put away your pride. And have rebelled. Rebelled. You know, you know what the rebellion today is? I don't know what sex I am. I don't like it my way, so we're going to get all our tractor trailers and we're going to park it where people can't do business, where people can't get by us. We're, we're, we're going to have road rage. We're going to have road blockage. We're going to violate the laws. That's rebellion. Not my president. Rebellion. When the, when the Bible says you're supposed to pray for your leader. Not a Democrat. I'm not going to pray against him. No, 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 no. The vote was stolen. We ought to have Donald Trump. <laughs> Rebellion. I'm not going to give my money to the church. I'm not going to give God 10%. I'm not going to give, you know, I'm not going to do that. I've got my money. I work hard for it. You'd be lucky I show up on church Sunday morning. I ain't going to read my Bible. I ain't going to get the King James Bible. No, 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 no. And don't worry about the message being preached. Because I'll forget the message the preacher preach an hour after I walk out of the church doors. You don't believe me? What was the last message your preacher taught you? Go get your notebook and read it. Even by departing from the precepts and from the from thy judgment. 
Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the words. When's the last time you read the Bible? I read the song. I keep running every song. Well, you know, you, you, you know, I, I, I got a little book here, and it's in March 24. <laughs> And you don't even know that book you read the scripture. You don't even know what Bible that is. I know Christians who read the daily bread of Catholic publication. You ain't going to get no revival out of the Catholic Church. I'll tell you what I believe you're going to get out of the Catholic Church. You're going to get Lucifer, Satan, the Antichrist. That's what you're going to get out of the Catholic Church. I'm a, I used to be a Polish Roman Catholic. April 24th, 1987, I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got family who are Polish Catholics are definitely in hell. They could be heaven or hell. And I've got very few that are in heaven. And the ones that are in hell gave me the hardest time. As I tried to witness to them, as I tried to tell them about Jesus, I tried to tell them the error. I had blood, sweat, and tears. No, we can't speak about people's religion. We can't talk about people's religion. You can't get a revival then. What you're doing is you're taking yesterday's dirty diapers and you're putting it on the child again today. What's that smell? It's religion. When God says no, well, my, my, my church says yes. You see, my, my Bible says yes. That's the Remember we talked about Daniel, verse 2? He knew the words of Jeremiah. Christians can't even find Nahum in the Bible. Habakkuk. Did preachers say tobacco? Here in church? I can't believe it. I went to church this morning and the preacher said tobacco. I would have lit, lit it up, but nobody lit it up. Neither have we hearkened unto the servants, the prophets? That's today. You're not listening to Ezekiel. You're not listening to Jeremiah. You're not listening to Daniel. You're not listening to Jonah. Jonah is a fairy tale by the scholars and by the by the by the Christians, by the pastors. How dare a man get swallowed by a sea monster? Sea monsters, Dolly. That's what their Bible say. You go to my my family uh, website, look up under PowerPoint, you will find Bibles that said, instead of a whale, a, a sea monster. And then they'll tell you that, uh, that Jonah did not die, he went to hell. He said, out of the belly of hell I cried. You're not listening to the... You're not listening to what Paul said. You're not rightly dividing the scriptures. You are in error. I am in error. The Bible says, I've got sins in my life. The Bible says, don't you do it. <laughs> Sometimes I confess those sins and God's like, you did it. You wanted to do it. I ain't forgiving you for that. I'm the ones with blood, sweat, and tears. Okay. <laughs> You're guilty. Which spank in the name of our, to our kings. That's Jewish. Even David had prophet. Nathan went up to David and said, Thou art the man. David listened to the man. Solomon didn't listen. Solomon said that the, 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 the law said a king is not to multiply gold. And he multiplied gold. The, the, the law said a king is not to go to Egypt. And he sent his people in Egypt to get the horses. And a king is not to have multiple wives. The guy that had a thousand wives and went to church Sunday and Saturday mornings and afternoons with his wives to other gods. He spanked to the princes and our fathers. 
God has spoken to the presidents, to the Senate, to the House, to the, 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 the Supreme Court justices, to the governors of this nation. And they say, no, we're not listening to that. It's okay to kill the baby. It's okay to be a sodomite. It's okay and legal. They, they passed the law now. We, you know, if you make fun of a colored person's hair, it's wrong. Man, there's so other more important lawful things that need to be done and then the hair. You can't even obey and, and, and follow the law about a cell phone while driving. And to all the people of the land, God has spoken. God is speaking with COVID. God is speaking with the volcanoes. God is speaking with the fires. He's speaking with the earthquakes, the tornado. He's speaking right now loud and clear because our God is long-suffering God. And before the rapture happens, he's trying to say, well, you get right. If you, you believe on Jesus, if you're not saved, and if you are saved, will you get right? Because the time is coming. I'm going to have them blow that trump. And if you stay in your sins, you won't be rewarded. There are many Christians, they go to church, and they'll have wood, hay, and stubble. And they'll be like, why? What happened? And there are many people who go to church, and the rapture would happen during that church service. They still be sitting in that pew. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. And some churches wouldn't even recognize so They stepped out of the doors, went to the chicken play to realize the rapture happened. You imagine that? We're on the day and age right now. The rapture would happen. If it's a church service time, that church would go on like nothing happened. And you want a revival? You think there's going to be revival? If you think everybody in church is saved, you're crazy. Oh, Lord. Look at it. Oh, Lord. Righteousness belongs unto thee. And, and Paul says there is none righteous. There is none that doeth right. We are opposite of God. You think God's going to bless? You think God is going to reward us? You think God's going to give us a national revival? The one of the greatest preachers of America, and he started off right. Billy Graham, he was right. He was on fire. And that man, as the years went on, he compromised and he enjoyed being with kings and, and presidents and royal dinner and he you know and then you can you know the asv or even the, this, this v bible and that v bible not the bible the king james bible and then you know go to church of your choice and you know and then this compromise and the, and the guy ended his life is you can lose rewards i believe that man had many rewards i believe he lost many rewards But unto us, confusion of faith. We are in an age of confusion. Again, I've already said, we don't. We have people who don't even know what sex they are. We got people who don't even know as far as sexual, we don't, they, they don't know the marriage bed from adultery and fornication. I mean, Hollywood goes about with adultery and fornication. And there's so much confusion. The fact is, they don't know that, you know, a penis matches with a vagina, not a penis and a penis or a vagina and a vagina. They don't know that today. And they don't realize and they don't celebrate that we are made by a creator, but they think we came from apes and we came from a big bang. And, and they're confused. Because they're not right with God. As at this day, at the moment, we are here in Babylon. You know, whatever happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? Where did they go? What happened to them? 
The rest of the book of Daniel is about Daniel. When it came to a time, there was at the sound of the music, get down on your knees and pray to my idol and image. And only three men stood up and did not bow down. Three men! There was only eight in the ark. There was only one disciple at the cross of Jesus. Paul, at the end of his life, said, he's gone. He's gone. He went back to Thessalonica for the world. Only Luke is with me. The men of Judah, they are God's people. Judah is the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when he sells his brother, then he goes and gets a harlot. And he has children by the harlot. And the children, two of them, die by God. And he, and he tells her, go home to your father's house and reserve yourself till my son grows up. And he goes out to shear sheep and he mates with that woman and has another child that is in the line of Jesus Christ. Line of Judah, that's David and Solomon. That in Matthew chapter 1, I think three or four of those kings are not even mentioned. The two vile. Listen, listen. If those kings were vile and they were, and they're missing, what do you think about Christians in the church today? Now to all Israel that are near, how near in Babylon with them? Israel north. They went in captivity before Judah. He's telling them there's, there's Israelites. There are northern tribes of Israel here in Babylon with us. They're not in the land. And they that are far off, they're, they're, they're all over. Throughout all the countries. They're supposed to be in Jerusalem. They're supposed to be in Judah. They're supposed to be in Israel, whether thou has driven them. They're not in their land because God says, get out. Take you and your sins and get out. You're on a time out. No, I, I am not going to give you the fresh cookies I just made. You don't deserve those cookies. You know, you know what they say today? Give it to them. You know, everybody on the football team, both the, the losers and the winners, they all deserve to get a prize. God says, you sin against me. You're going to get judged. You know what the world's getting today? It's getting judged. Well, look, Pfizer and, 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 and what are the other pharmacy, you know, we got the vaccines. We're all safe of COVID-19. You wait to see what comes around the corner next. You don't give God the praise. He's going to make it worse. Go back and read Jeremiah. Go back and read Ezekiel. Because, because of their tra trespass, that they trespass against thee. I trouble. You know what trespass is? When God draws a line in the ground, he says, don't you cross that line. And you step your foot over it. You trespass. I remember growing up as a kid. There was this open field we would play in. And in the middle of the field was a the, the electric company's machinery. And there was a fence around it. And then, I mean, signs, no trespassing. And they had that little barbed wire over the fence on it. And just always, just, just, that, this whole, if I crossed that fence, if I crossed that fence, if I went over that fence, I trespassed. I've broken the law. You know, Christians trespass against God. God tells us something and we don't do it. God tells us not to do something and we do it. Oh, Lord, look at it. Oh, Lord, again. To us belong conf confusion 
of faith. All this confusion, it's our fault. You have taken the Bible and prayer out of the school and put in Catholicism and put Hinduism and put Mormonism and put uh, 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 Islam. You put ev ev evolution. You took God, Jehovah, and Jesus Christ out of the schools. You talk, and this is the product of a non-Bible, non-Christian, non-Jesus life. Everything's going on. You've been teaching the kids the survival of fittest. That's why they're picking up the guns and shooting each other. That's why all these crimes. To our kings would be us, our president. To our princes, to us would be the House and Senate. And to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. That message is not taught in the churches today. I don't care what Hollywood says. I don't care they're lying in bed in, 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 in Hollywood making a good old movie. It's called adultery or fornication. It's a sin. They're shacking up. They're just lovers. They're just trying. It's a common law of marriage. No, it's fornication or adultery. Well, it's AHD. It, you know, it's a troubled child. He's got a no. It's called rebellion against the parents. What's it called? When we put colorful words and messages of Rainbows and pride instead of sodomy and abomination. We have sinned. We are all sinners. You may not do my sins. I may not do your sins. But we're all sinners, even saved. To the Lord our God. Is he your God? When that preacher gets up saying we're going to, we're praying for a national revival, a holy revival. How many people in that church are actually belong to God? In 2022. And how many of those people in that church will proclaim to God? You know, sometimes God to the, to the Christians today is, is God, you're the great bubblegum machine. Here's my prayer quarter. Oh, God, I wanted the red bubble gum. You gave me the blue one. And we don't thank God. Because by the time we, we're to thank the Lord God, it's hurry up, put the dishes away, because i got to get a nap, because i got to go Black Friday. Instead of the men helping the women uh, wash the dishes on Thanksgiving, they're in there watching a bunch of men fight over the stupid pigskin. It's not even pigskin. <laughs> you, know you know why it's not pigskin anymore? Because Jews wanted to get in and play, and they couldn't touch the ball. It was pig. It was unclean. Did you know that? And now it's leather. A Jew can touch leather. But you didn't know that. So we have sinned against God. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. When we confess our sin, when we acknowledge our sin, and we come before the Lord God with our sins, guilty, humble, down to the dirt, seeking, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse mercy and forgiveness. Daniel and the Jews of the time we're reading never had what we have today in the church age. Even they went to the temple and they brought whatever they need to brought exactly how God did it and the priest did exactly how God did it. There was only one time a year they were cleansed from their sin the day of atonement and even then 
they died and they went to Abraham's bosom, they didn't die and go to heaven. They could not say the old time. I know preacher, there are Christians back there. But, but they can't say back then. They can't say to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, to be absent from the body and I really don't know where I'm going to go because I'm under the law. You know, there, there, there's some people in the Old Testament you read, did they go to Abraham's bosom or did they go to hell? Quite questionable. But God is mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him. You see, that God forgives us, God gives us mercy, even though we've still sinned against Him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. We read the Bible, we don't do it. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. How many gospel tracts did you get out last week? You know, how many people did you tell about Jesus this week? No. I heard your family who came in from Kansas. Yeah. You guys heard, yeah, we had, and we had others come in. How many of them did you tell about Jesus? I mean, after all, you weren't in church Sunday, so you, you must have been speaking about Jesus to them. Oh, no. I don't want to upset the family. But Jesus said, go in the world and preach the gospel. Well, I look at what Matthew said, you know, we'll go and teach them and all that. And, and, that. and Matthew is Hebrew. Matthew is Jewish. They ain't the church. That's why they all run to the, to the commission of Matthew. You don't, as a matter of fact, you know, many new Bibles, Mark 16 from verse 9 to the end is gone. It's wiped out. It's cleaned out. It's a footnote. It's erased. Not even there. Because we don't want to go in the world and tell the world. And many, I, I was in the church. They have a they have a track rack, and you know how many times I wanted to mark those tracks some way to show that they were not being used. I know churches don't even have track racks. I know churches that completely forbid church track racks. They don't want it. Bible says prayer without ceasing. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. To walk in his laws. Now we're not under the law of God as far as what Moses wrote, but we do have laws. Our law is going to Paul is where to have one wife. <laughs> That woman that was, that was caught in adultery at the well, Jesus said, yeah, I know he's not your husband, but you got four of them. Something wrong with that one. Now, th th there is biblical definition for divorce, and I, I don't promote divorce. But there are some men behind the pulpit, the leader of churches, they don't qualify because they have multiple wives. And some of them are not even by a marriage certificate. Oh, baby said that. I got a man that told me when I was going to get married again, I have two wives. Oh, excuse me, sir. My first wife died. By the Bible, we had been set apart to death do us part. When I married when I married this woman here, I don't have two wives. I mean, you don't, a marriage certificate, uh, <laughs> that's not a Bible qualification to be married. If you met with flesh joining flesh, <laughs> that's a marriage. How are you doing on that one? Which he set before us by his servants, the prophets, and that's the law. And there are plenty of prophets that came into Israel. There's plenty of preachers and teachers that's come into the church age. There's been revivals throughout Europe and America bringing the word of God. Revivals that shut down the theaters because it was wrong. It was a sin. Re uh, revivals that shut down the beer halls and the bars because it's wrong. And revivals where 
the, the owners of these places would hire men to go kill that preacher. A man that would get up and, and, and to, to uh, New London County and other counties of Connecticut. He'd be coming through the thing and he'd get up on the tree stump when people's out there farming and all that. He'd get up on the, on the tree stump and he'd cry out and start preaching. He would come up to uh, the factories of Norwich, Connecticut. He would go up to the founder. He'd go up to the boss. He'd go up to the owner, step in her office and say, Sir, at lunchtime, may I take the time to, to preach to your people at lunch? And he would be given liberty. And in 2007, no, 2013, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 2021, you go down to a farmer's market in Daytona Beach, Florida, and you preach the gospel, 911, what's your emergency? He's a guy over here sneezing on us. He's a guy over here talking about Jesus. I wish you'd shut up. I wish you dropped drop dead. I wish you'd go away. I wish the officers would arrest you. And when you are doing what is right by the Supreme Court and you have the papers of the Supreme Court to say that that man is doing right, if he says one more word, I'm going to arrest him. For what? Doing right, officer? We don't want to hear it. We don't want everything to do with it. Shut that man up. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Therefore, the curse is poured out upon us. Everything's gone for them. The temple's gone. The city's gone. Jerusalem's gone. Judah's gone. There's been death. There's been famine. They're carried away to this pagan nation. You know what curse is poured out upon the Christian? I know a Christian can't be cursed, but you know what's poured out upon a Christian? He doesn't get his curse today, he, though he may. But if he doesn't live for Christ and doesn't do what he's supposed to do for Christ, when he gets to the judgment seat of Christ, he gets wood, hay, or stubble, and there's no reward for that. And the oath that's written in the law of Moses for the Jews and the servant of God, why are we in Babylon? Why are we all over the world? Why are the Jews all over the world today? Well, we make good money in New York, make good money in California. No, because we, the Jews, have sinned against him, Jehovah. Tell the Jew you go back three times a year to Jerusalem at their feast. But we can't. It's not yet. Because you sinned against your God. And right now, today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, we don't believe in Jesus. We, he was a good teacher and all that. Yeah, you're sinned against God. And then the, the, the Gentile, well, you know, there's all other ways. My church is just as good as your church. And, you know, when we die, that's it. We just, you know, we just lay in the grave and nothing else. And it all is well. We don't believe in hell and blah, 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 blah. God told the Jew, obey the law. They didn't do it. Look where they are. God told the people today, the Gentiles today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And we don't do that. Well, here comes the COVID. Here comes the fires. Here comes the earthquake. Hey, we're coming up to hurricane season. It's water. And Russia is attacking Ukraine. Yeah, there'll be a lot more. The Bible predicts at least two more world wars. Now, I wanted to get to verse 19, but we got to stop right there. I got preaching. I don't care. Not. I am not sorry for what I said. And if you don't like what I said, and, and, and you rebel against God, that's between you and God. I am teaching right. But if you want that revival, look what Daniel's, look at the prayer. There can be no pride. We are sinners. We are not able. God is able. You're not going to see this prayer 
Then we got to do a part two, maybe three. You're not going to see your, your average Baptist church today prayer this prayer. I have been in good Baptist churches, and I have been in bad Baptist churches. And I have been in mediocre Baptist churches. I've been in white Baptist churches. I've been in black Baptist churches. I've been in Baptist churches with, you know, big buildings. I've been in Baptist churches. We sat in a guy's living room. You know why I say there's going to be no revival except by an individual and maybe his family? Because the altar is not what the altar is supposed to be. People don't go to the altar. And there's been some great men. And then there are preachers. There's one preacher. I call him Firewater. Why do you do that? Because we've had preachers come in. They preach. I'm in. The Holy Spirit is in that room. And that preacher gets up. After the after the guest preacher free, he gets up and then he's he's got to give his five cents on what was preached. And the, he just threw water over the fire. I'm telling you right now, there are times I will put, and this week has has been off for me. But during the week, usually after I get set up before I read my Bible, I will listen to. I got about one of five preachers I listen to. Anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes. And I will be here. It's like, Lord God, I am sorry. And I will start getting down and repenting in tears. Or saying, Lord, I want to be more like this. Whatever it is. That's missing from your churches today. Whereas I get, well, any Bible's okay. There's no infallible Bible. That's, that's just too strict living. But we're going to do what we, what we want to do. We're going to do it because, we, you know, I feel it's right. And forget, forget the revival. Revival vows prayer, confession, sackcloth, and Lord, Lord willing, tomorrow, hopefully I will look at the other illustration I wanted, but I'm not going to do it tonight. This has been long, but it's correct and right.